welcome to the MBS Show Review and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. I ship it. I ship all of it. Yeah, and we have the perfect shipper to help you ship those things. Torterra. It will cost shipping and handling, but other than that, it's such a beautiful. It's so beautiful. It makes me emotional. Yeah, we may have yeah. lost a few ships in the past, but this one is here to stay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's canon. It's canon. Yep. Oh, boy. So, anywho, uh, in today's episode review, we are going to review Season 9, Episode 23, The Big Mac Question. In this episode, when Rick McIntosh and Sugar Bell decide to propose to each other, everything their friends do to help up makes a mess of the whole thing. Yep, this is one of those, what you call this episode that made fans go yippee or boo. Yep, yep. So before we get into the review, let's go for first impressions. Silver, what do you think? Well, I mean, like I say, I really do. I do enjoy the shipping. I'm also glad when it becomes canon. And this is just a sweet, fun episode. I mean, uh, we'll get into talk about characters like Discord in due course, but I just love seeing this. And I especially loved the ending where Big Mac and Sugar Bell have their heart to heart. That's all I dare say now, lest I, lest I give it all away and go all squee. <laughs> all right, then, all right, then. And Tara, what about you? This is a very sweet episode, and I'm pretty sure it made some people emotional in a good way, but also in a bad way, because, like, you know, some people might have been like, I preferred this ship, but now it's not official. <laughs> but it was very sweet, and I believe this is the third time that they mention about marriage in the in the MLP. Because I know the first one was Shining Arm and Cadence, and the second one was, um, shoot, I forget the parent's name. I know one's Pear Butter, but I forget, uh, Bright Mac, that's it. <laughs> Marriage is what brings us together. Yes, the only sad part is that with the whole virus around, some marriages are being cancelled, like my brother's. Wait, what? Cancelled or postponed? Yes. Oh, that sucks. Well, my brother's original day of the wedding was supposed to be on April 5th, but that uh, didn't happen now. You can do it mm. online, like through Skype and whatnot. You know Skype? That thing that everybody knows and trusts? He could, but he doesn't yeah. have a computer. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah. Anyway, as for me, this episode was a lot of fun. I I, I do enjoy the marriage kind of concept, especially in kids show because marriage is something serious. And yeah, having it shown here was a lot of fun. Discord is fun, and Spike tempting fate was also fun. So a lot of fun all around. So anywho, if you have not watched this episode yet, pause here and welcome back. I hope you enjoy the episode. Uh, it was a lot of fun for us and well, let's get right into it. So we start off the episode a bit strange. Like, I don't think they've done this before where the character is facing the fourth wall, talking to the audience. Oh, they have. Yeah, they have actually. Not including Pinkie Pie. No, the Saddle Row Review. Oh, yeah, yeah that one. getting ready to open her boutique in Manhattan. Yeah, 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 that one, that one, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this one was a bit strange to start off with. And we get to see Spike telling that um, it all happened so fast. I got no idea what happened. Um, Discord was involved. And we get to see Discord, Discord talking. Like, oh, yeah, it was like my fault. Like, everything bad happens to me, blah, 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 blah. And we get Miss Kick telling her part of the story, the CMCs, and then Spike again. And then we get to the story proper. Uh, do you want to guys chime in on this one, or should I just move on? Let's see. I, I'm trying to remember if this is called a frame story, or there's another multiple takes on the same events. Frame narrative? Storytelling. Uh, there's a special term for it. Hmm. Storytelling. Uh, Tortero, you go ahead. I'll keep researching real quick. Uh, all right. Well, I can't say really say much of the beginning part, although it does like, um, a, I wouldn't say it's a, like drama or anything like that, but I guess you could say it's, uh, like a huge event happened and you want to know, hey, how'd this happen? And you're everyone's side of the story. So it's like, hey, you got Spike's side of the story for a bit. And he says, yeah, it was uh, Discord. He did, he did this. And then Discord's like, technically, I did my best to help. It was all Spike's fault. And then, you know, they go to the rest of the characters like, okay, you know, everyone's telling it in their perspective. For example, me, like how I say my opinion on something, 
but I don't go into full detail because I'm a reviewer. No, 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 not an analysis person like Silver over here. Mm. I'm not an analysis person. I'm a reviewer. <laughs> <laughs> Says the one who goes into full detail over there, everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Silver, you got what you need? Well, uh, I believe the, the more commonly accepted term has a Japanese frame, but this is called multi-perspectivity. Wow. Okay. That's a little bit of a tongue twister there. Indeed. It is basically taking in all manner of accounts, uh, emotions, biases, all these characters weighing in on the same events, but from their own perspective. Hmm. Okay. That's interesting. But for the episode? Well, for the episode, well, seeing them all think, what kind of terrible disaster started? And then one, I will always appreciate a Three Amigos reference. Yeah. But anyway, we haven't reached that part yet. But <laughs> what? you said this was the opening. Yeah, like uh, the prologue, like the characters talking together about the thing that will be happening. Well, okay, well, then get to that part because that, uh, that part's good. All right, okay. So get to uh, I'm, I'm moving along, I'm moving along. So, anywho, uh, we go into the flashback where Spike uh, sees Big Mac's uh, wedding ring to him. Wait, no, not him, but for Sugar Bell. And. Discord pops in saying that he wants in on the secret and said secret is that Big Mac wants to propose to Sugar Bell and beforehand uh, Discord says hey, we are three amigos which is a really fun show sorry movie and I'm going to pause here for a bit yeah Silver you were saying about the three amigos well just that I remember that movie I also appreciate they, they included the invisible swordsman in that shot what which part invisible swordsman Yes. Can't you see him? No. Well, he's invisible, so That's I'm assuming the point. not. Yes, exactly. What frame? Which frame? That frame right there, which you can obviously see me pointing over this podcast. That's audio only. <laughs> what? I thought this whole time we were doing video calls. We haven't done that ever, Tara, which I really want to rectify no, that. You're supposed to roll with it. <laughs> yeah, Norman, don't be a blocker. God. <laughs> Oh, boys. Anyway. We can't, ta can't take you anywhere. <laughs> I also appreciate that uh, they bring back the windows windowsill and uh, uh, the blue pony with the horseshoe cutie mark. Mm -hmm. She She's the one who reacted when a pie landed on her on her windowsill. It's like, oh, it isn't even my birthday. <laughs> yeah. And now, she, now she's back. She's just waiting for more pie, I think. Yeah. <laughs> like what? Uh, the wiki even uh, talks about it. First the pie, now this. Yes. Uh, well, so anywho, anyway, it's a fun scene, a fun scene. Anyway, I'm going to carry on. So after Big, sorry, after Discord screams that Big Mac wants to propose to Sugar Bell, uh, we got to more flashbacks. Uh, flashback is a, well, it's not that big. You know what? Um, I'm going to make a rule here. The flashback bits are kind of redundant when we're going into the proper review so i'm just going to acknowledge it exists and move on basically what you're trying to say is they're doing your job for you <laughs> kind of yes so anywho after pony's talking we go to flashbacks so uh, big mac wants to tell the plan to the group and spike here is a big mac interpreter so that's great so the plan is for big mac to build a Picnic bench, which is similar to the uh, what you call this? What was it? Um, display you sorry, display case that Big Mac built for Sugar Bell while in the uh, what was the official name was called Sun uh, Starlight's Town. Wow, that's strange. But yeah, they never really gave a name for that place. They did. It's Starlight's Town. Our town. Our town. Yeah, it's we our town. It was the way they sang it so many times, mm -hmm. and as they marched around. Mm -hmm. So, anywho, uh, Big Mac built display unit for Sugar Bell in her town, and wants to build a picnic bench similar to that in Trail Plakers, and then wants to put her through some uh, scavenger hunt by placing apples with messages and putting them around and stuff like to make it a lot of fun this court just says that this is a bit silly but you know what since this is your thing i'll just follow through 
So Discord and Spike teleports to Ponyville proper. And well, Discord just puts all of the apples in their proper location. And Spike is in town to grab the food. So before they could acknowledge or before they could just proceed with the plan, Sugar Bell and the CMCs run out really fast. And Sugar Bell missed the first message. And now it's Discord's job to make sure that Sugar Bell gets the message. And pause here. Uh, Tara, what do you think? It's very sweet how big because I've I've seen this stuff in the past where a special someone is getting um, like they want to surprise someone with a scavenger hunt and stuff like that. I remember one person doing that for me years ago, and I feel like I mean I'm not getting proposed or anything like that. God forbid. All right, Celestia forbid. <laughs> But I know that my special someone said that she's going to do something special on my birthday when it comes to that. And I'm just getting a bit worried. He's like, oh, no, what's going to happen? <laughs> oh, no. But it, but it is very sweet and also a bit weird how Big Mac doesn't talk much. And yet Spike just knows what he's going to do. He's like, oh, you're doing this and that? that? And Big Mac's just like, yep. But then when Discord gives it a try, it's just like, uh, no, why would I like that? <laughs> true that, true that. And Silver, what are you? Well, first off, one thing I appreciate is that we've ditched the cynicism uh, that Discord showed back in the big, uh, the breakup breakdown, where he's so, ah, love, it's so stupid. He's actually on board with this. He's not even thinking for a moment, oh, our trio's down to two or anything like that. Was that a Lion King reference? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. You're darn tootin' it is. See, I get these things. Well, don't worry. I'll be throwing. I'll be throwing other references your way. We'll we'll see how you fare. <laughs> I mean, I did, I still don't get what Sweebu meant by I, I can't even pronounce that word. But please continue. Ooh. Well, now you got me intrigued. But I'll type but it out I what say. you said. <laughs> but I say so. But the problem is that Discord already is showing signs that he's going to make this worse because he's bored. He's he sees it as mundane beneath him. So he's not putting a lot of care or thought into his actions. And often it's the lack of awareness that's, that undoes him. He assumes because he's nigh omnipotent, but not omniscient, very key importance. Uh, he assumes that he'll always be in control of a situation. And <laughs> if this season isn't about proving him wrong, I don't know. No, oh, true that, true that. There's also the scene where Spike is holding uh, Discord's severed hand. Yeah. Let me just paint that image for a minute. This but is a kid's show. Yeah, well, you got to hand it to him. Ah, I see what you did there. But actually, uh, it's kind of funny. Discord is the trickster archetype in my eyes. He's all about achieving a goal, but through the most dishonest means possible. A fair assessment, I think. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And one of the funny things about the trickster is that decapitation or dismemberment is very much a part of their motif of death and rebirth. They kill the the you that is in an effort to take something new. A trickster will tear your life apart so you could start rebuilding it. So I found that nicely on theme. It does feel that way for this episode, which we'll mention when we reach that part. So that's about all I got right now. I mean, everything else is mostly just seeing a preview of events to come. Mm, all right, all right. Well, I'm pretty sure we all had that one moment, though, where when Spike asked Discord if you put the apples in the right spot, he's like, yeah, I did. He's in the stairs like, or oh, did I? Because <laughs> I know I've had my moments where someone asked me if I did that. I'll be like, yeah, I did that. And then they make me second guess myself. Like, wait, did I do that? <laughs> yeah, but this one, you can clearly tell the change in Discord here, where if old Discord, he wouldn't have care if it was in the right place or not but this thing this event here means a lot to big mac so this god has to do it right even though it's not chaotic or it's not in the vein of chaos but he's doing it for a good friend so up on him man like good, good on him but anywho uh, moving on so while discord double checks if he places all of the apples in the right spot and also at the same time, make sure that Sugar Bell notices the Apple message, the first one to start the whole process. Uh, Spike goes into the bakery or Sugar Cube Corner to get some food for the picnic. So in the bakery, 
we see a panicking Mrs. Cake trying to bake a lot of cakes and just let's just say she's making a lot of dessert that is not great. So Spike asks, like, what are you doing besides cooking stuff? Like, who's this for and whatnot? And Mrs. Cake says she couldn't tell. It's a, sub uh, it's a secret. And Spike managed to sneak in a bite and says that, uh, this is terrible. Like, yuck, ugh, bad. Like, ooh. So um, while that's going on, we see Discord trying to place the first message for Sugar Bell, but every time something happens, she misses it. So Discord being Discord tries to find a way for her to notice the apple, and that is by making the apple scream the message. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna let that sink in for a minute. So anywho, Discord calls back all the apples and do the same and each apple has their, it, <laughs> their spot to send the message and off they go. What could go wrong, right? What could go wrong? And I'm gonna pause here for a bit because chaos will ensue soon. Silver, what do you think? Well, okay, Spike and Mrs. Cake. One, it's nice to see Mrs. Cake again as we don't get she doesn't get a lot of screen time these days uh i do wonder why she's trying to do this alone does she not have helpers um, then again she put pinky under such distress back in uh the one where pinkie pie knows mm -hmm. maybe this is all an effort to make sure uh she doesn't pinky doesn't have that conflict again yeah. now spike okay one you do not just steal a bite of someone else's hard work so already spike committed a major faux pas there Spike's going to comment on her cooking more than a few times, or baking, I should say. And there's a, a line that I often quote from Stephen Fry. It's a very human uh, failing to prefer to be right than to be effective. He's going to comment on this, and he's not wrong when he says that they don't taste good. But note that that statement does not help Mrs. Cake get, get good. It's ultimately a wasted effort. And people always say, oh, but, I, but it's true. Okay. You know what's also true? You're not helping. <laughs> that, that is true. That is true. But there's that. And then, of course, Discord. Discord, I think of a Dumbledore saying, being who I am, my mistakes are usually quite spectacular. <laughs> Discord's got all this raw power. So when he screws up royally, uh, you see a pretty big impact. Even more so as we'll see later on this season. Mm -hmm. True that. Like, really big screw-up. Like, oh my god. Foreshadowing. Oy. So yes, in a weird way, this whole thing is a big foreshadowing of how Discord just screws everything up. So true, so true. Screws everything up. <laughs> Alright then, anyway, moving to Terra. Terra, what do you think? Well, I mean, I just, well, first off, uh, I was going to question where Mr. Cake is, because you don't see him a lot anymore, but maybe he's taking care of the baby, so I guess that kind of makes sense why he's not around. But he could have the babies nearby, but, you know, we, we won't judge by that. <laughs> All right. But it is good. Uh, like, the way I see it, I don't see the spike stealing or taking a huge bite out of it, but he didn't really need to take a huge piece from that small... Um, dessert just to taste to see how it is i mean for example yesterday i tried baking i baked uh, brownies yesterday nice and I, it actually turned out good and my mom she took a bite and then she's like oh it's really good and then my it, i didn't even think about it just my quick response is are you just saying that to make me feel better <laughs> <laughs> oh D D D i said i sent some confidence issues <laughs> no 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 we just joke around a lot but no, it, it did it did turn out pretty really good. I even saved some for my brother. Nice. But and then you know obviously Discord being Discord, he he doesn't like you go full on magic with his powers on trying to get Sugar Bell to notice the apple. You know he just decapitates his hand mm -hmm. and tries to get her to notice. But when she looks away, 
that's when things you know is going to turn bad because you know when discord starts using a lot of his magic it's going to go bad to the point where he has like all these apples running around i mean i guess you could say though that he doesn't have an insider with him <laughs> oh boys yeah it, this is getting chaotic this is getting chaotic with discord default surely you just ah, true that but anywho is the old hero yeah, I was trying to think of another Apple pun, but I got nothing. All right, then. Oh, that's your core issue. <laughs> oh, boys. But anywho, um, we carry on with, well, Spike tries to help Mrs. Cake with the message and try to dragon breath uh, them into the pie, which in hindsight is a bad idea, but in uh, at the time, it sounds like a great plan because Spike sends message all the time to pies so what could go wrong right well he, wait he sends messages to pies all the time I, I mean how often is he in communication with them i don't know I, I, wait no pinky might be using him as a as a communication service with their family probably but how do they message back do they burn it in a candle? No. <laughs> well, I thought that all the messages always went to Celestia. Like I didn't know that Spike had a cho uh, choice on where to send them. Hmm. Why not? Mm -hmm. It's he is, it's magical dragon fire. True. And what did anyone remember that Spike received a message from uh, Cadence before? Or even what well, training she, armor? She, I thought she, I thought she, they sent their messages via Snowflake. Oh, yeah, though. Which means they're so special. <laughs> uh, Spike's power is... Wait, he, he did send letters to Ember, right? I know Quite he possibly. sent one to Princess Luna. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's he can control where they go. So, yeah. But anywho, um, with the pie and stuff, uh, Spike sends the message to the pies and it burns, which raises a lot of questions. So anywho, the food is ruined and Mrs. Cake is peeved off with him. Before um, Mrs. Cake could carry a, whatchamacallit, rolling pin to bash Spike over the head, um, something terrible is going on outside. And when we look outside, it seems that the apples are sending the message to every pony it sees. From the random pony to... Which we'll call this. Uh, who else? Who else do we see? Some random ponies like the Flower Sisters and so on. But I have to point some Rose Daisy. <laughs> we yeah. I have to point something out in the on the wiki page on the fifth image. We get to see Lyra proposing to Bon Bon. Yes, blinking, you'll miss it. I know. I think I did miss it. <laughs> and wow, this it. it uh, this is so much. I'm I'm speechless. And here's the best part: Bon Bon is proposing to Lyra, and it's like ah, <laughs> much fun. Big Mac and Sugar Bell late to the party for that. <laughs> yeah, true that. True that. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna carry on. We can talk about it later. So, anywho, the apples go around terrorizing the ponies of Ponyville, and <laughs> when Spike sees this. He just calls upon Discord and says, Discord, what the hell did you do? And Discord says, in hindsight, you knew this was going to happen. <laughs> Which is true. Which is true. So, anywho, while this is going on, Sugar Bell does not see the apples at all. Oh my goodness, how? <laughs> so, Discord just says, you know what? Um, screw this. I'm just going to fast forward things. Takes Sugar Bell, brings her to the spot on the top of Sweet Apple Acres, and quote unquote just delivers her there. And Big Mac's not there. Oh no! Brings her back to the front of the store, uh, the store of Sugar Cube Corner. And I'm gonna pause here. So, gents, uh, who did I start with? Silver or Terra? Ter Terra was it? Start with Terra. All right, okay. Terra, what do you think, man? Like, what do you think of said chaos? I mean, you can't really say much, except that, you know, we, we had that conversation about Spike burning the pies and sending messages in them. 
And then you got the usual Discord's magic causes chaos with the apples running around. I guess you could say that they're the apple of their eyes. <laughs> I had to think for that one. But um, it is nice, though, that now, looking back at it, yeah, you, you do see like a post of Bon 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 Bon's like, I got one, too. I was going to propose to you. It's like, oh, it's so sweet. And then you got a couple of other appearances, like Grand Pair and Bird Oakwood from, from The Perfect Pair, which is great to see in the background, because see, it shows that, you know, they're not just one ponies in a certain episode, and then they're gone forever. Like, you know, they're part of the po they're part of Ponyville. They're, they're there to stay. True, true. And then, obviously, you know, Discord, I like how he admits, he's like, you know, you can never really rely on me to do these things for you. And then he talks about how apples aren't really good listeners, and you always have to go with bananas. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, go, yeah, go with bananas, because keep going with that, and then you'll drive everyone bananas. Oh, boys. <laughs> uh, anywho, uh, Silver, what about you? Well, do, mm, do you like mm, bananas? Oh, no. <laughs> uh, that depends. How do you like those bananas? <laughs> On the uh, moon! Uh, I don't know how to answer that. Oh, man. Will you have time to answer it? On the <laughs> moon! <laughs> oh, jeez. Torterra is now on the moon, yes. Oh, man. Need to tell you, sorry, uh, after this, I need to share something with you guys. I, I, I'm guessing you guys already seen it, but uh, whatever. So, Silver, what do you think? Well, I mean, it's just, it's fun to see Discord inflicting this chaos. And again, Spike is is be more concerned with being right than being helpful. As Mrs. Cake is even like, how dare you? <laughs> and uh, just kidnap Sugar Bell for a proposal. Yeah, next you can have a shotgun wedding. Ha! <laughs> Double meaning. Although with Discord involved, you probably would have two shotguns exchanging vows. <laughs> before ex exchanging bullets. But yeah, chaos ensues. I don't know if I have more to add on that. Is it? Although I will comment on the existential crisis that would arise from sentient fruit. It's short-lived, goes to mold rather fast, and it's supposed to be eaten. What are you supposed to do with that in a, in a fantasy world? I don't know, man. There's cartoons. No question, because it's a fantasy world. <laughs> True that. Oh, but our fantasies reflect our lives. So what would you do if your if your food started talking to you? Would you convert to vegetarianism? But wait, this, these aren't meats. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, man. De so you go meatitarian. No, you can't because... Yes. <laughs> I think we finally found a way to shut vegans up. <laughs> uh, but anywho, what about Lyra and Bonbon, man? Well, I don't... There's not much more to say that is it all Raven Squeed. <laughs> I mean, it's funny. We... The fandom built up the idea of these two as an item early, early, early on. And ever since then, the show has gradually been featuring them more and more as first really close friends who just happened to, to bump flanks. Giggity. <laughs> and now they're, they're actually getting married. And why not? If anything, I was a little afraid that their revelation would overshadow Big Mac and Sugar Bell, as everyone wants to talk, talk about their proposal, their marriage, and not Big Mac and Sugar Bell. Because, let's be honest, as fun as this episode is, Lyra and Bonbon bon have been a background component for every season, for close to a decade. It's We feel like we've been on a journey with them, even if we were just glimpsing it. And so, therefore, it's, it's like, wow, that's... That could be a scene stealer. Applejack in the last roundup can attest. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. But the dif the biggest difference between uh, Derpy and uh, Lyra Bonbon here is Derpy has been the, that character where she never had a voice before. And she is the fandom's darling. So having her be all ditzy and klutzy like that and quote-unquote cute is a show stealer uh, the biggest difference with Lyra and Bonbon bon here is just background and like you mentioned before uh, blink and you miss it is so true with this one like if you didn't really pay attention you got no idea what what's happening so yeah um, biggest difference is one is in the foreground and the other is in the background so it's a funny word foreground it makes it sound like you're is there an anti-ground then Probably, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but anywho, is that all, Silver? 
I think that's it for now. All right, I'm tr- I'm gonna speed things up a bit. So anywho, while Mrs. Cake and Spike bicker for a bit, uh, Big Mac pops to Sugar Cube Corner. Discord pops in with Sugar Bell, and they do the whole "I scream your name" kind of deal. So it's like Big Mac screaming in Discord, uh, Sh- Sugar Bell screaming in Big Mac, and then uh, Discord saying Mrs. Cake and then Steven's in the background saying I'm Steven and then I say Torterra then I say I'm Spartacus and then the Brady Bunch are saying stuff Marsha 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 <laughs> yeah so before everyone could talk and explain or just figure what's going on uh, we see the CMC and Granny Smith running for their lives because a big giant monster is coming oh no so we see the CMC's point of view right now. So, uh, we see the bakery inside. Uh, there's a lot of chaos going on. And the plan is to create 22, uh, what you call this, desserts for Big Mac to eat in Sugar Cube Corner. Uh, the way, this, the logic is for this is Big Mac wanted to send a message to uh, Sugar Bell via Pi, but it went so wrong that it didn't happen. So Sugar Bell wants to try and make it work for Big Mac. While this is going on, uh, Mrs. Cake is in a tizzy because she got no idea how to create the food because she's in a panic. Oh no. So Sugar Bell's mission for the CMC is, okay, uh, send this one pie to Big Mac to initiate the plan. And before they head out, they see Spike and Discord in the door. Sugar Bell's panicking. Oh no, what do we do? What do we do? Uh, they say, okay, uh, let's rush it. Let's bum rush. So they rush through the door and they split up. The CMCs uh, stick to one side while Sugar Bell goes to the other to buy some flowers to spruce up the restaurant. And... Apple Bloom is excited because she's going to get a sister-in-law. Yay! Awesomeness. So while this is going on, we see Big Mac on the hilltop trying to make the bench. So he's looking for a screwdriver and whatnot. So um, he's he'll be off for a bit. The CMC go to the barn and they see that, hey, is Big Mac creating a picnic bench that's similar to the display case that he built for Sugar Bell? in her town hmm okay still where's big mac we need to give him the pie and apple bloom just says you know what granny smith says if you're looking for something look at the place that you're most uh unlikely to find or something like that so while they plan on doing that so they run off so they go to the bowling alley to fetishize pet sanctuary and to the what you call this uh spa the spa yep, yep. and they couldn't find big mac at all oh no wait, wait, where did they go where did he go and i'm gonna pause here Te- Terra or silver i started last oh, time okay silver what do you think well let's see here one this is the fun of a frame story where you're looking back at how we got to a certain point ba- basically now you can revisit the exact same events but from a completely different perspective and I find it very telling that Sugar Bell is all like, no, those two can't keep a secret to save their lives. They'll ruin everything. <laughs> it's like, ooh, sister, if only you knew. <laughs> oh, wait, maybe that's what Apple Bloom should say. And of course, it is It is fun to see Apple Bloom uh, so excited that she's going to have another sister. Kind of like what she said when when Pinky was revealed as a possible family member. Oh. Hey, they never co- brought it up again. <laughs> hey, cousin. <laughs> they did at one point. Are Pinkie Pie and Applejack related or what? <laughs> that, that, that is, Maybe. you know, that's a valid question. Are they related or not? Maybe Caramel shipped them and he just wanted to know if he had accidentally incest- pulled an incest. <laughs> Boy, you know what? Probably in season 10. If we ever see it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm despairing here. Doom, despair, sadness. Oh, but... Anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, so then we have all these running around. We have, and here's the funny thing with Apple Bloom screaming. And once again, uh, uh, 
darn it, that that blue mare with the horseshoe cutie mark looking around. Am I getting my free pie or not? <laughs> yeah, she, she's just waiting for it. <laughs> but uh, here, I find this is a funny companion piece to surf and or turf. Back there, Apple Bloom was sort of the anchor or the reasonable one, uh, while Scootaloo and, and Sweetie Belle were arguing it out. Now the tables have turned. Now it it is Apple Bloom who is the the kooky go nuts one. <laughs> you are the ones who are crazy. And I love the rea I love the expressions from uh, both both uh, Scootaloo and Sweetie Belle as like uh, <laughs> Apple Bloom just keeps changing her story. It's like. <laughs> She say, "Oh yeah, let's go over here." Oh, he's not there. Well, Granny says we should just uh, stay put, and wh what we want to find will appear. It's like that's what we were telling you. <laughs> Especially Sweetie Belle is looking at her like, "Girl, you're lucky. You're cute." <laughs> yeah, I'd kill you otherwise. Yeah, what, last week you mentioned that Sweetie Belle is the uh, angry prone one, the one that will <laughs> jump <laughs> first. Well, she's definitely prone to emotion. Uh anger well she certainly gets the mo yeah she does get pretty emotional with her uh reactions so but just that whole oh you've got to be kidding me <laughs> also sweetie bell may have gotten a quick uh jump into maturity as she searched the spa opened the door and uh scared some mary inside who threw a towel at her. <laughs> it's like hmm what did you see oh my oh my indeed kid show <laughs> A family movie. A family show. <laughs> so, anywho, um, Tara, what about you? Well, I also like, too, how we rewind and then we go to the other pers uh, the other pony's perspective on, you know, what happened. At least now, now we know why the CMC and Sugar Belt ran by. It's because they're planning the same thing, but to Big Mac. And we got some continuity here where Sugar Belt mentions about, you know, Big Mac trying to do an invitation with the pie. But why don't get though? I mean, I understand you're trying to do something special, but why put each word in every single dessert? It's like I, and then what, and then you. It's a, that's a lot of work for Mrs. Cake. And then Mrs. Cake's like, yeah, you know, it was very sweet. How could I say no? It's like, you could easily say no. <laughs> uh... Oh, you say that now, but just wait until, wait until someone asks you to help them with a proposal. How are you going to turn that down? True that, man. True that. <laughs> Well, my brother already did his proposal, so I don't have to. <laughs> did, well, there may be others. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, true that. But uh, uh, I just had a brain fart. <laughs> Are you talking about CMCs? Yes. Another thing, too, is how did Discord and Spike not hear Apple Bloom shout that she's going to have a sister-in-law when they were right there? It's not like they teleported or anything like that, unless all of a sudden they fast-forward to when Spike went inside and Discord disappeared, that it kind of makes sense. And I also like how that one pony, uh, I f also forget the name, but the one where she always gets the pies, oh. she just keeps peeking out the window. It's like, why am I hearing all these voices? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Uh... But I could also agree with the CFC how Apple Bloom's like, Granny Smith always said that we can go here to find this person. It's like, well, we said to do this, but okay. And then after it's like, hey, let's do this. Like, we just said that earlier. <laughs> Oh yeah, but it's still it's still all fun and it's got some good funny moments in here and it's still good. I mean, we're not done yet, but it's still pretty good so all far. Right. So anywho, I'm gonna wrap things up. So uh, moving on, Big Mac still waiting for the plan to happen, and you know what? Uh, it's not working. So I'm just gonna double check see if it works or not. So he walks to town. Uh, we get to see the CMCs waiting for Big Mac and asking Granny Smith, "Yo, Granny." Uh, have you seen Big Mac around? And Granny just starts talking about Star Trek. Yes, Star Trek. That is insane. <laughs> so anywho, uh, while Granny reminisces, reminisces about Star Trek, we see a big giant shadow looming over them. And oh no, uh, fast forward for a bit. Uh, we see that the shadow looming over them is actually the apple monster thingy that discord created and oh no it's terrible terrible what would they do oh no discord just snaps his finger and it's done and everybody just blames each other because 
uh, this this is your fault that this is happening or this is your fault that the uh, marriage proposal ruined and stuff blah 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 and everybody just looks at Discord Discord this is your fault and Discord just says this is this is to be expected of me like I'm the lord of chaos huh. what do you think what do you expect so flash forward scene to the uh, rest of them talking about what's going on and stuff so skipping that for a bit to well Big Mac and Sugar Bell walking through the apple orchard and Big Mac saying that oh I'm sorry Sugar Bell that the proposal thing didn't work and it was a mess and whatnot uh, I didn't mean to and stuff and they end up at the apple slash pear tree that pear butter and bright Mac planted a long while ago they say that oh you know what because of the chaos uh, we kind of know what's going on and they propose to each other and then kiss yay did they kiss no they kiss yay yep they actually kiss no tongue oh it's a kid's show they say it's a kid's show and yet they decapitate you know discord's hand twice in this episode oh this goes discord but i find something fascinating where uh the ring that Big Mac gave is turned into a necklace. So that's fascinating. Usually unicorns have rings on their horns, if you remember right. That happened, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, with Cadence and Shining Armor. Yep, yep. So Discord and the rest of the group tries to amend things up. That <laughs> Sorry, they try to fix things up. But, you know, it doesn't matter. Like, things work out in the end. So, it seems that, well, even with all the chaos, they managed to uh, get things right and them getting married. Ah, oh, so awesome. And you get to see uh, Spike dress up. And let's just say that Spike and Discord are the only ones dressing up while the CMCs are naked. They're naked. And we see Applejack crying because of the story and she's very appreciative of things. And we see the, what you call this? Wedding ceremony happening. Uh, we see the Apple family, including Grandpa Pear and Crazy Cat Lady. And on Sugar Bell's side, we see the town's folks from her town. And uh, Mrs. No, Mrs. Uh, what? Who was her name? Mare Mare. Uh, she is the one officiating the wedding by just doing her stuff and in the end discord wants to celebrate their wedding by making apple sing oh god what have you done and episode ends yay so silver what do you think well there's a clear bias here he didn't make the pears sing i uh, no comment grand pear pear is off to the side like oh well come on we're not good enough for you i think this is a positive for him well, dialing it back to the beginning, we we briefly touched on the scene where Big Mac is just waiting at the completed table for his soon-to-be bride. And he just looks adorable just sitting there going, yep, mm -hmm. waiting, yep, as if somehow that will make them appear. So he just looks adorable. Star Trek references are always fun. I mean, well, Granny Smith is a green scare, green female. Talking about Star Trek, I'm surprised she and Grandpa never kissed. <laughs> I will say the giant apple, well, that escalated quickly <laughs> and then was suddenly over. Yep, yep. <laughs> so, uh, see, yeah, Discord, you might want to lay low for a while as you're uh, wanted for murder. What did he do? Wow. What did he do? I'm thinking of Anchorman. He did a lot of things. <laughs> He did also put put a lot of lives at risk with rampaging apples. I mean, let's be, just be honest. Uh, that's true, that's true. That. But here's one thing I haven't commented on throughout this, and it's rather important. Up until this episode, Sugar Bell has been a very passive member of this relationship. It's Big Mac figuring out how to break up with her. It's Big Mac figuring out how to woo her. It's Big Mac making all this effort to win her affection. This is an episode where, where now we see Sugar Bell making efforts towards the relationship herself. Sure, she's doing the same thing as Big Mac to an extent, but that doesn't change the fact that she's uh, doing this and is being an active participant, which I really enjoy. 
And that's what seals my my adoration for where they actually do get to propose in front of the the trees that Big Mac's parents put together. And it's just pulls on your heartstrings wonderful, especially when uh, when Sugar Bell says, today was the, a disaster, but it's also the last day we'll have to do anything alone. And I just like, oh, yes, 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 yes. This, this is wonderful. This is this is grand shipping. I ship it. Ship it so much. Yep, yep. That, that there is great writing. Shippity dippity do. But then I got to ask, what is the what is the ghost of Christmas past doing at the wedding? Who? Where? What? That's what Applejack is dressed up as. Oh, he's talking about the way the main style is. Oh, really? The main the style, outfit. the clothing. It it all matches their uh, a Christmas Carol. Really? Satire. A heartwarming tale. Uh, really? Yeah. I, I need to double check that because I it's been a while since I checked that episode. What was the episode called again? In which season? A heartwarming tale, and I believe that's uh, season six. Season six. Season uh, six. A heartwarming tale. Okay, I'm just going to double check because if it is, then like, huh? Okay, that's strange. Everything's strange, but. Carrying onwards, because we're, there's one burning question, and it ties into A Heartwarming Tale, because that was an episode revolving around Starlight Glimmer. Mm -hmm. Guess who's not at the wedding? Oh, yeah. I know. I noticed that. Like, when I first saw it, I was like, huh, why is Starlight not there? Like, isn't Starlight a crucial member of uh, Sugar Bell's town and whatnot? Well, she's the founder and a friend. It's one thing that the main six are not present besides Applejack because this is Big Mac's wedding. Maybe he just wants to keep it to closest friends and family. But if the theme of this is that unintentional mistakes can still yield a happy event, i.e. everything was a disaster, but it was still the best day for this couple. This couple might not exist if not for Starlight. True, true. So that she's not at the wedding is very confusing i'm going to assume that she was busy with schoolwork no yeah that, that's the best that could be the best reason but at the same time too you drop everything and just go because okay uh excluding the main six except applejack uh starlight is kind of uh sugar bell's quote-unquote family member because if you get what double diamond party favor and also night glider there you got to have at least Starlight there. I mean, it's just common sense. Common never sense? Know. This is Pony! <laughs> but anywho, um, anything more to add, Silver? Well, I talked about the clear apple bias. Party favor and Nike later, maybe they're getting ideas themselves. Little nudge nudge. But other than that, I mean, it is fun to see the, the golden golden horseshoe gals and, uh, oh, what's his name? Smoke Cedar? I think it was Burnt Oakwood. Burnt Oakwood seeing his uh, his best friend's children, child getting married. That's just wonderful. So it, this pulls on all the heartstrings. True, true. And this guy has to ruin it. <laughs> well, it, well, he didn't ruin it at the end. He made it his own style. True. There is no ruination in this case. Thank that, God. True, that, true, that. You always have to have a little bit of chaos with this quarter round. Uh, true, that, true, that. But anywho, uh, Tara, what about you? What do you think? Oh, I really like this episode. It was very heartwarming, and even though it was all chaotic, the lesson in the end is, you know, nothing is perfect. Even though we made mistakes, we'll always be together. And then that line that Sugar Bell says that this will be the last time where, or I forget the, how the exact line goes, but that line just shows that, you know, they're going to be together forever. And on top of that, this is also kind of the last episode before they go into the series finale because this is the last episode with Big Mac and Sugar Bell basically and it's like ah oh, it's so sweet mm -hmm. and then you got the wedding and pretty much what uh, Silver pointed out with Bert Oakwood looking at his best friend's son getting married same with the golden gals and grandpa it's, it's just so heartwarming I really like this episode yep, yep true that true that and as for me this episode was a lot of fun like it wraps up the Apple, big, sorry, uh, it wraps up Big Mac and Sugar Bell's story arc where they hook up, broke up, get back together, and got married. And that's a lot of fun. And we get to see Discord. 
um, I won't say understanding, but this court is cool in this one. He he's not a big jerk. He's okay. <laughs> granted he may have created chaos with the apple, but it's to be expected of him. Like it's Discord and it's in Ponyville, so things like this happens on a Tuesday, so it's normal. And as for everything in this episode, like it's a lot of fun. I highly enjoyed it. Uh, the conclusion is much fun. And other than that, um, yeah, it's it's a good one. It's a good one. It, it, it concludes nice and clean. By the way, who voices um, what you gonna call this, Mrs. Cake? Uh, Katie West. I have to double check. Uh, I can hardly look at that. I'm just wondering, was it her? Miss Cake, or did you do more info? Uh, Miss Cake. Ex expand. Uh, his main relative's voice, Tabitha St. Germain. Oh, okay. Huh. Yeah, I was thinking about Kitty Westlock, but no, it wasn't her. Okay. Much <laughs> awesomeness. You thought I was Cassidy at Westlock, but it was me, Tabitha. <laughs> it's always Tabitha. Uh, but anywho, yes, um, this here is the quote-unquote last episode before the final. So, another slice of life, so much awesomeness. Oh, uh, and um, what did you mention before about this court ruining plans or um, not, things doesn't go everything to plan? He'll turn your life upside down and maybe even burn your life to the ground so you can start rebuilding it. Uh, true, 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 true. And yeah, it happens here because the what, the proposal plan did not go as planned. But in the end, it all worked out. It did all work. Out. Yeah, it all worked out mm -hmm. in the end. But anywho, uh, with that episode ends, and well, Silver, what are we gonna do next week? Well, we're gonna step away from the pony, but not from the little, as we go with Little Witch Academia. Oh, much awesome! And we're going to talk about Orange Submariner. Or is it Submariner? Imperious Rex! <laughs> uh, basically, we're going from a love story to there's plenty of fish in the sea. So basically, there's a lot of... Yep. <laughs> That's a fishy conundrum. <laughs> so anyway, that will be next week's thing. So stick around for that. So anyway, um, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at theambitiousgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show. And my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Oh, you can find me a variety of places. Uh, you can find me on the Twitters and DeviantArt under MLP Silver Quill. You can also find and support my videos on Patreon or Ko-fi. On Fridays, I have taken to starting a Fulfillment Friday where I work on Patreon reward tiers. You can find that on my YouTube channel, which is just do a search for Silver Quill or After the Fact, or you can find me un under uh, MLP Silver Quill on Twitch. And while comics are in short supply at the moment, I do still post on Equestria Daily on Wednesdays with editorials and reviews. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Go check it out. And yeah, even, even though the comics are in short supply, Silver does a lot, like uh, character analysts, uh, story plot thingy. I, I forgot. Like, what was it you do? <laughs> like the proper phrase, editorials. Yes, but also like uh, story synopsis, story uh, character thing. Oh, follow up. Yeah, mostly most of that. But still, um, he does that. Go check it out because it's a fun read. And what? There's still some comics left in the pool. Well, I've I've tapped all the comics in the pool, unfortunately, uh, including the manga. Inclu yes, I at the time we were doing this, I had just recorded the manga, report on the manga this past week. Mm, yep. So uh, just stick around; it'll be entertaining. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Tara, what about you? Well, the good people can find me on Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Torterra1324. Or they could just do a Google search and I'll be on all platforms, including my Patreon page and my Ko-fi page. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, go check it out. Terra there's awesome. Uh, and I believe you have your own Discord thingy. So, yay. 
yes, I do have my own Discord server where also Norman Sanzo is here. And on my server, there's even an MBS show uh, part of the server. So you could always be updated on the MBS show and you'll always be notified when a new episode is uploaded. True, 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 true. So anyway, uh, also please subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And Stitch Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on live.com. Uh, if you would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank a Lucky Knight, Amy, Tristan, and also Master Black. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Vaquil. And I am Tartera. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Adios. Bye-bye. Oh, their wedding is awesome and simple. Not like that other two ponies wedding. Like, yeah, no, those, those two pony wedding are just chaotic. Actually, what you, what you don't know is one of those apples hanging from trees. tree is really a changeling in disguise. Ta -ta -ta. Lagasse. What is Ocella's doing there? She just wanted to see because it's so beautiful.